Hello and welcome to the Afri Dominion Show. My name is Freeman Singer and Giran Kabo, and thank you so very much for tuning into our program today. I shall say our special program today. Uh, those of you joining us live, especially if you're joining us live from the social media, be it private social medias or public ones, uh, for instance, like the public uh, social media like Facebook, YouTube, and the likes. Welcome, welcome. We are so glad that you can find some time out of, out of your uh, busy schedule to join our program today. Uh, a huge welcome to those of you uh, watching us live from your own television, uh, from your radio stations. Uh, we are truly, truly grateful for the opportunity uh, to appear in front of you guys to come and share the conversation uh, today. So a huge welcome. Come on by. Let's discuss. Let's, uh, let's join uh, together, guys. Uh, and it is in this spirit, guys, that um, we here at Afri Dominion, we are here today to talk with you, to discuss with you, to share some love with you. And we are absolutely doing it boldly and truthfully and with no apologies to any one of the people. We speak boldly, guys. We speak truthfully and to each and every one of you. We're not afraid. We're doing it now. We're doing it. We, we've done it yesterday, but we'll do it tomorrow. And we also want to uh, let each and every one of you that the conversation here at Afri Dominion, all the conversation rather, not just this particular one, uh, they all driven in the tr in the they all driven in the spirit of truth, love, and trust. And these are the benchmarks by which we would hope each and every one of you uh, to measure both the validity and the truthfulness of the content that we share with you. Anything that you find out of line. Uh, we would love that you actually uh, take some time out and call us up. We have a phone number available. We have many ways that you can get in touch with us. But it is our hope that this conversation uh, become uh, fruitful, uh, adds value to your lives, to everything uh, that, you, uh, that you do every single uh, day. Uh, that is literally one of our hopes. Uh, in our endeavors that we actually add value instead of wasting any of your time. Our time is precious and so is yours. So we truly respect the time that all of you viewers uh, globally uh, that you actually uh, have given us this particular time. You could have been doing so many things, but here we are together and hanging out. So I am super grateful and very humbled uh, for the opportunity to appear in front of you. And I want to extend the same opportunity to each and every one of you guys to come on by here at the studio uh, and let's have a conversation together. We have our Zoom open and it is my hope uh, that those of you who have some time, you can swing on by because today is just one of those a special, special, special day uh, that we are going to be uh, having an amazing conversation. Though one, one hour, one and a half hour, but it is nevertheless going to be a great conversation and we expect nothing less than that. Uh, and with that in mind, guys, I want to make sure that up front, uh, I just let you know that those of you joining, uh, joining us live from the television, if you would like to um, send some feedbacks, uh, you're going to have to use our phone number. You're going to have to uh, jump on to any one of these social medias so we may be able to actually uh, pass you, uh, you know, pass your message live as it happens. Uh, those of you on social media, uh, in particular, if you are on any one of those public uh, uh, platforms, social media platforms uh, like YouTube, Facebook, and there are a few others. Um, we have already put our Zoom link right underneath there so that you can actually come right through and have a conversation. Our Zoom is being monitored, so any one of you guys who come through, uh, it can be right now because we're not going to waste any time, guys. Since we only have one hour to one hour and a half maximum, we want to make sure that we get to discuss whatever it is we need to, to share it today and then get moving to the next thing, okay? Um, and with that in mind, guys, I also want to... Uh, let you know that it's such a privilege. It's such a privilege uh, for us to be alive today and for us to be uh, to be actually commemorating this very special day um, that we have not done in so many, 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 many years. Uh, and I would explain that to uh, those of you, uh, those of you who have no idea what we are talking about momentarily. Um, and what's the next thing? And I want to make sure that I pull out before. Oh yes, a huge thanks to an army of, um, of, of techies uh, from the studio, from HMG Network and the affiliates who are literally broadcasting the signal all over the world. Uh, those of you catching the signal from uh, television, welcome. Those of you catching the signal from, uh, uh, from your radio stations nearby, welcome. And of course, 
our brothers and sisters uh, tuning in uh, from social media. All of you are welcome. So a huge thanks to the networks uh, because it is quite an effort to make sure that this conversation is uh, properly uh, broadcasted and with no errors. Uh, in any case, you have seen how we get hacked, you have seen how we get shut off. In case uh, this conversation shall be shut off by the likes, uh, you know who it, who, who it is. Uh, oftentimes it's Facebook or, or YouTube, um, and we're not ashamed to say that because we, there's no reason to, keep, you know, to hide it. Uh, if they do cut us off for whatever reason, um, those of you who are on Zoom, you can continue to follow, especially I'm talking about those of you who are on social media. And the rest of you, you shouldn't have any, um, you shouldn't have any uh, interruption because we have many feeds uh, going out. In any case, today it's going to be a Remembrance Day. We're not going to be throwing no rocks, none of that. And that is why I really want to encourage each and every one of you who isn't able to come through, to come through. Simple as that. And with that in mind, guys, I'm super excited to be here today on April 6, 1994, going backwards. That's what we are going to be talking about. And in other words, today uh, we are remembering April 6, 1994. So much has happened. But before I get into that, I want to make sure that uh, to those of you who are just here for the very first time, I, I want to give you a huge welcome, guys. Uh, at our Free Dominion show. Um, and I want to just give you a quick brief of what the show is about so you have an idea. Because I'm, I'm so excited to jump into the program, so I want to make sure that I do not actually take away some of the most important things that you guys uh, ought to know before we get started, okay? Uh, so um, first and foremost, I want you to know, those of you especially who have no idea what this show is about, uh, the idea of Free Dominion, it's an idea uh, that inspires uh, it also advocates and it encourages, as well as help our brothers and sisters, Africans, kings and queens, uh, to take the full control of Africa, to take the dominion of Africa, one nation at a time. Um, and we're talking about us, sons and daughters, kings and queens, not foreigners. We're talking about us directly. And all of this, we want to do it in the interest of African people and our nations first and foremost, and then the rest of the world afterwards. So that's what the idea is about. We are here to inspire, to advocate, to encourage and help all of you, brothers and sisters, take the full dominion of Africa, one nation at a time. And all of this, we want to make sure that we are in charge, not foreigners, for the interest of all of our people, first and foremost, and then the rest of the world afterwards. So the show, Afri uh, Afri Dominion show, uh, it is, uh, it's a mouthpiece of the idea. As you know, it programs on television, programs on social media, programs on, on radio stations. They're there to, to serve a purpose. So uh, Afri Dominion as a show, it's there to be a mouthpiece of the idea. It's there to make sure that we broadcast signals, we broadcast programs of which inspires, of which advocate on, the vo on, the, on, on, uh, on behalf of our voiceless brothers and sisters, um, but also uh, making sure that this program encourages real time or on demand to all of you sons and daughters, kings and queens, to take the full dominion of Africa in the interest of Africa and African people first and foremost. And we wanna make sure that we, white, we, swipe, you know, we sweep the whole entire continent of Africa with not one single nation, left behind. So that's what we do here on the show. If you stumbled here by accident and this is not what you have in mind, goodbye up front so that you won't say that we have wasted our time uh, or your time uh, because right here we mean business guys. But it's also a privilege to find the opportunity to, to come forward guys. Um, Africa as a whole has had such an, an incredible history but at the same time uh, the history has been purposely buried. So it is a, it's quite a privilege for all of us uh, to have a voice, guys, not just any kind of voice, a visual audio voice. And we also have an opportunity to preserve this voice for millennium to come. So it's quite important that all of you get to see how important it is that you seize the moment, that you do what, it, uh, what must be done so that we can actually share the conversation and make sure that we pay it forward to the rest of our brothers and sisters out there. 
And with that in mind, guys, I also want to uh, make sure that those of you who are turning in for the very first time uh, and you have no idea how to get in touch with us, uh, please, by all means, uh, we are reachable uh, first and foremost through our website. Uh, our website, I think it's, uh, I would say, actually, I don't just think, I know. It's one of the gateways, the best gateway that I would, uh, uh, that I would encourage each and every one of you to go through if you want to get in touch with us. On the website, um, not only you have our address, you have our phone number, you have our email, you have so many things there. So I want to make sure that I give you that information um, and then go through there and come hang out with us. And that website is www.afridominion.com www.afridominion.com Like I say, you'll find our phone number, our social media handlers, uh, every important detail that we would love for you to, uh, to actually consume, it's going to be found there. Uh, the main email for those of you who are just uh, techies, it is info at afridominion.com info at afridominion.com uh, The rest of the information on the website can help you to come through here and it is our hope that you also take advantage and come and support this program. This program is it's literally financed and supported by our brothers and sisters. This is all of you are guys. Uh, we are fully responsible for the broadcast. We are fully responsible for its finance and its financial uh, uh, backings and all of that. And so I would love to extend a welcome to each and every one of you guys who will find this program helpful to come and join our program. Come and join us, guys. It could, you could be speaking in front of these cameras just like I am. Uh, this, is, this is our house, guys. This is our house. You could be in our create, you know, you could be working with our creative team, um, bringing programs, bringing to life programs that people have never heard of before. Uh, you could also be on the finance side, uh, pushing, pushing so that we can, uh, we can increase, uh, you know, the, the, the transmitters so that most, you know, more and more people, more and more of brothers and sisters uh, can have an opportunity to actually tune in to us. But I'm super grateful because uh, those of you who don't have the luxury to follow it on, on televisions or radio stations, you can get on, on, on social media, you can get on the internet. So we are putting so much energy uh, on the internet transmission because it is cheaper and it can penetrate so many markets and all of you can be satisfied. And the bottom line, we want to make sure that if we are communicating with all of you guys, uh, we get to add value. You get to be satisfied. That also means in case you are not satisfied, we would love for you to use the information we just provided, getting back to us, letting us know that, hey, you can improve uh, this program this way or that way and, and so on. Are we together? So it's quite important. It's, quite, it, it's, it, it's really one of the things that I want to make sure that I do not miss before we start our program today, uh, make sure that you have that information. And we are welcoming each and every one of you, be it the friends or the phonies, all of you are welcome today, especially that today it's one of the very special, special, special day to me personally, uh, to my people, and you will get to know what if you are not in the know right now. Are we together? So with that in mind, I think the most important things um, at least the most of the most important things, the communication aspect of it, I just told you how to get in touch with us. The next thing is uh, how this program, um, how, how it's structured. Because we, have, uh, we do this broadcast from Monday through Friday. And every day, Monday through Friday, we, we just have different topics. And these topics are, in, are literally uh, are enclosed into themes. We have themes that, that pushes out different programs. From Monday through Friday, very unique themes. And these themes are some of the most important themes, not the exhaustion of the themes that we would like to bring to, your you know, to your table, but some of the most important ones that we have chosen um, that we can actually uh, push our content through. Uh, on Mondays, uh, we get to talk about the African refugees and African stateless person. We literally have so many refugees in Africa. And not just internally but also outside of Africa and we also have stateless person those of you who do not know what a stateless person is is that person who not only doesn't have uh, papers but also not you know no nation wants you so imagine you belong to Africa 
You are literally uh, born, you were born in Africa, somewhere in Africa, in one of those nations. Yet, your own nation doesn't want you. Or for whatever reason, you find yourself as a refugee and you just have yet to be at home. This is an experience that in particular, my, my people from Rwanda have experienced for over 60 years. And I am quite sure that your peoples as well, from whichever countries that you are coming from, you have a story uh, literally similar to our story, uh, Rwandese people. So we want to make sure that we actually uh, take it upon ourselves to solve the problem of refugees and the stateless person. Nobody is going to be uh, in the position to do it like we would do it ourselves. Hence, why we're talking about it, and after we're talking about, you know, we talk about it, we actually get to take action. On Tuesdays, we get to talk about the, uh, the Constitution, law, and uh, policy implementation and review. So we review and then we implement. And we're talking about African explicitly. And I want you guys to not feel offended, especially if you're not from Africa, um, because the program, as, uh, uh, as the way it's programmed, it's programmed uh, to have the, uh, you know, the most benefit of our brothers and sisters. The same way any nation uh, seeks out its own interest, first and foremost, and for its own citizens. So it's no different than, you know, what we're doing here. And I want you guys to know that this is not discrimination. We just want to make sure that we have our own housing order. First and foremost, before we pretend or before we, we, we try to, to say, what can we do to help you guys? Are we together? So, uh, hence, on Tuesday's uh, themes, we want to make sure that the constitutions that we have in Africa, uh, the laws, the internal laws and the policies that we have are actually in alignment with what we want as a people, with what we want as kings and queens, sons and daughters of Africa. Anything that doesn't represent us, we literally, we literally, inspire you, encourage you, advocate that we get rid of it. Openly, we do not hide. There's no need to hide. Now, if you pretend, you can pretend, but as we've decided to do it in the open, which means there may be times where you see us appearing to be confrontational with some people or some institution or some organizations. Truthfully, we are seeking the interest of our own people first and foremost. And those frictions, when they do come, which is why we may get cut off sometimes. Uh, this network, especially the social medias, uh, we have police that just cut us out sometimes. Um, you may get a chance to, <laughs> to find it when we're getting cut off. And I want you to pay attention to what we say here. Uh, because uh, we have people who have colonized Africa. We have people who are still in charge of Africa, who are none. Africans who are third parties but they want to take advantage of Africa and African resources are all 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 under or they just want to make sure that none of us can have a saying in it and so it is usually when we talk about it you know when we talk about those kind of conversation that we get cut off because the same people may be owning one of the networks we may be passing our broadcast through uh, but nevertheless, uh, this nation, the United States, which is where I'm based right now, uh, it's given us the liberty, the rights to speak openly about various issues. And, and that right is not exclusively to just the United States citizen. According to how it's spoken, they encourage the entire world to speak up, to fight for your rights your well-beings and the likes, and, and so on. So we are doing no different. Any one of you who find it out of line, please come to the show. Let us talk about it. Uh, Thursdays, Thursdays we talk about the spirit of dominion. Um, and for those of you who do not know what that is, the spirit of dominion entails a spirit of governorship, a spirit of um, uh, rulership, a spirit of um, uh, mastery, a spirit of management, uh, and, and, and so on. We get to literally extract uh, a little further that when we have, uh, when we're talking about it on Thursdays, and I would highly, 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 highly invite all of you guys to come and participate because uh, we are kings and queens. You are kings and queens. Kings and queens manage, they dominate, they take over, they take control of resources and nations. That's who you are, that's what you do. Everything else comes secondary, but you are kings and queens. Not prime ministers and presidents. That's, that's, an, that's another title. That is, naturally, that is not 
naturally yours. And we can get into that later. On Fridays, we get to talk about the spirit of domin- uh, we get to talk about the current events and how it impacts Africa and African affairs. And again, all these themes are equally important. Um, and I want to give you guys a huge welcome, a huge welcome, a huge welcome, so that you can come and take uh, and take part in it. I think I may have forgotten to talk about Wednesdays. Wednesdays is one of my favorite days at Afri Dominion. On Wednesdays, we actually uh, get to testify. It's like a testimony time. We get to write our own history, our own way, with no apologies to nobody. Why do I love that? Um, you can speak your heart. You can speak your truth. The truth and nothing but the truth. The naked truth, even if it hurts. And the beauty of it, it's being preserved for millennia to come. So those of you who have something to say, who have something to say, and you have no platform to say it, especially if you're a brother or a sister, welcome to Afri Dominion. Uh, we graciously have been given some airtime from, uh, from, uh, from various stations through HMG Network and affiliates. So we have to literally use the airtime that we have and get to all of you. And so because we program these conversations, uh, we manage them, we use the airtime as we see fit. That's the beauty of that. And that's one of the most important thing. When you have the biggest microphone on this planet, you can either choose to use it responsibly or irresponsibly. If you use it responsibly, you can actually help add value to the global community. And in this case, we want to make sure that we add value to all of you brothers and sisters out there. Even though everybody is also benefit, but you are the focus point for us. Are we together? So, I'm not going to say anything else more. I think you got the drill. You got to know what we do here. I just want to jump into the program today because we, I, I, um, we are we, we're really running out of short of time. So today, guys, today um, I want to talk about something that is very sensitive uh, to a lot of brothers and sisters from Rwanda and from Burundi. So today is April 6th. And on April 6th, it was one of the most darkest day of Rwanda and Burundi. Today is a it's an, uh, it's it's almost an, it's an anniversary of an assassination of two sitting presidents president of Rwanda and president of Burundi so basically the the topic the main topic it's remembering the April 6 1994 assassination of two sitting president Habyarimana of Rwanda and Cyprien Habyarimana uh, of Burundi and 10 other passengers. A straight out assassination. Clear, clear cut assassination. So we are remembering that today. And that's why I said that I want you guys to come forward uh, up front quickly so we can be able to talk about what I talk about it and you have a chance to say a word or two before we close uh, the broadcast. If you so choose, because we're not going to push nobody here today. And um, we also are in another darkest period of remembering the genocide in Rwanda. Uh, as you know, there's been a genocide in Rwanda. And the labeling has also become an issue. Uh, on the side of the Rwandan government, it's said it's genocide against the, uh, it's genocide of the Tutsis. Um, and then on the other side, they talk about the genocide of the Hutus. I mean, there have been so many genocides depending on who's doing what. But as a brother and a sister that we're meeting here today, we want to remember the genocide, the Rwandan genocide. But also massacres that took place in Burundi. Now, I also want to put it out there. Uh, we deliberately did not invite any panelists because we want to make sure that this is open. So all of you want to speak, all of you want to speak, and we're actually doing this for the very next 100 days, and we started on April 1st. Why? Because we want to break the cycle of a lot of things that have been taking place in our nations, mainly because we are not paying attention. So today, let it be one of those days that we are going to break the silence. Those of you who have something to say, welcome, welcome, welcome. So I want to make sure that those of you also who uh, our mathematician, from April 6, 1994 to April 6, 2022, 
How many years is it, guys? Those of you who have calculators. I submit to you that it's 28 years. Approximately, actually, uh, in the evening tonight around, around 8.30, I believe, it will be literally 28 years. With no justice to the families of the loved ones who were assassinated in the plane crash. That was carrying Rwanda, the, you know, the president of Rwanda, Habyari Mana, and the president of Burundi, Nadia Amira, and the 10 other passengers. Equally important. We will get to that momentarily. So that's what we want to talk about today, guys. And it's such a historical day. Uh, today, April 6th, both in Rwanda and Burundi. However, there's something unique that I want you guys to pay attention to today. So like I say, today it's going to be the 28th commemoration of the assassination of uh, President Habyari Mana of Rwanda and President uh, Nadiami Cyprien of Burundi and, and the 10 other people. And right up front, let me actually uh, mention the names of those, uh, of those also who, who were assassinated together because I want to make sure that we honor every single one of them. Um, so the plane was shut down was literally shut down by, by one of those um, uh, um, uh, surface to air missile from Russia. And the people who, the crew members uh, who were, uh, or the, the, the whole entire entourage that was in the plane that was shut down, uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead and just read it all out. Uh, first and foremost, we can talk about the, um, you know, the crew member. Uh, there, was, uh, you know, there was a French uh, pilot, Jackie, uh, Jackie Hero. And then there was uh, another co-pilot, uh, Jean-Pierre Min, uh, Minaberry. And then um, there was also flight engineer, uh, Jean-Michel uh, Perrine. And then the, person, the passenger, you have the Rwandan president, Juvenal Habiarimana. Uh, and then you also have uh, uh, the, the Rwandan army chief of staff, uh, General Major, uh, General Deo Gracias Sabimana. Uh, you also have the... Uh, the um, uh, Major Tadeba Bagaragaza, who was uh, in the presidential office or who worked for the president. Uh, there was also uh, Colonel Eli Sagatwa. Uh, he was, uh, he was uh, a, a personal secretary to the president of, of Rwanda. Uh, there was also Ambassador Juvenal Renzaho. He was a political uh, affair counselor uh, to the presidency. Then there was uh, uh, Dr. Emmanuel Akingeneye who was a personal uh, doctor to the president of Rwanda. And then, of course, there was uh, the president of Burundi, Cyprien Hadiamira. And then there was uh, uh, the minister of communication of Burundi, uh, Mr. Bernard Chiza. And then there was the minister of, of planning, uh, who was uh, Syriac Simbizi. Um, we may be able to show you guys some pictures, but some of those pictures, uh, we, we ran into some copyright uh, issues. So we're not going to be able to show you all the pictures, but those that we are able to show you, we will show you. So a total of 12 people were, um, were literally uh, shut down uh, in Kigali, in Kigali uh, Airport. Uh, it was before it became an international airport, and all of them died on spot, as you can imagine. Uh, there, was, uh, there were no survivors. And um, the tragedy took place on April 6th. Uh, according to the sources from aviation uh, uh, community, uh, it was approximately uh, it was approximately around 8:28, sometimes um, uh, around 8:28 p.m. on that very dark night. Um, two missiles, um, the two missiles were actually shot, uh, and these missiles are called SAM-16 surface-to-air missiles. Uh, there's so much information about it. Um, they were shut down at Kanombe Airport in Kigali, Rwanda, and of course, uh, nobody survived. So today, given that it's the 28th uh, commemoration day, uh, we also want to make sure that we get to talk about it just a little bit. And those of you who have uh, information about it, I, I, want, I want to make sure that, that you guys come forward. You come forward and you share some information, uh, especially that after 28, guys, after 28 uh, years, I think it's about time that, that most of you grow some boldness and, and actually share some, you know, share the information with the people. Um, I want to also uh, let you know that uh, um, one of the main reasons why 
we're speaking openly, we're speaking publicly, is because um, there is such a very disgusting um, fear amongst uh, Africans, in particular Rwandese people. Rwandese people are fear-driven. They cannot speak, they cannot talk. For these past 28 years, um, you guys were just introduced to coronavirus and you were using masks. Uh, so in Rwanda, they've, they've been silent for 28 years with no coronavirus, which means an average citizen cannot talk openly, freely, because of the leadership that's there right now in the nation. And those of you who were looking for the pictures, I, I believe they, they helped us to uh, show you. Uh, that's the, the Rwandan... Um, uh, that's the Rwandan uh, jet that used to uh, that used to transport the president. This was a Rwandese presid uh, a presidential plane by the Rwandan government. Not by the it was not a plane by the president of Rwanda. It was his means of transportation. Because it's important that we say that the, there is a reason why. Um, those those are the um, you know the the, the 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 remnant right after the plane was shut down. Uh, this is actually at the presidential um, uh, home. It so happened that the plane was literally shut down, uh, shut down, and it fell. Uh, and it fell at the uh, private residential of the of the president of Rwanda. Um, so that's it right there. And uh, since that, guys, uh, all hell broke loose in Rwanda, but also in Burundi. And um, up to this very day, up to this very day, uh, there's been zero justice. There's been zero justice on the perpetrator of, the, uh, of that plane crash. And that's one of the things that I hope we can actually get to discuss today. Because uh, uh, only in Africa, only in, Afri in, in Africa, uh, two sitting presidents get assassinated, get assassinated. And there is no uh, independent investigation uh, that takes place on it. Now, I also want to tell you guys that we have the main suspects. Uh, I mean, it's publicly available. Uh, you have the rebel, uh, the RPF rebel or the Rwandan Patriotic Front uh, rebel who was fighting the Rwandan government. And those rebels are now the government of Rwanda. So now, the government of Rwanda, the primary suspect, um, was in charge of the investigation. Can you imagine? If you suspect me to be a killer, and then you give me, uh, you give me the, 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 the pleasure to run the investigation, can, can, is that good or what for me? I want to publicly say that, and I want the international community to, to, to actually realize um, how wrong it is for you to, to really belittle Africans, to belittle Rwandese people, to belittle Burundians, and to disrespect us. I want to put it out to you guys. Uh, let me take an example, actually. Uh, when when, when uh, President Kennedy was assassinated, uh, for those of you who do, know, who do not know President Kennedy, he was a United States president who was assassinated back in the 60s. So when he was assassinated, um, it didn't. It, it took so many years before uh, uh, the n you know the official nar narrative uh, was actually out. They knew potentially who, ha who have done the deed, but you just didn't have any access to it. But eventually, they did. You know, they did put together something and they presented it to the people. So now in Rwanda, twenty-eight years later, there is no independent source of investigators and, and, and independent justice that could actually say this is who have done the deed. The investigation was given to the Rwandan government, the rebel, who were suspects. What can you expect from a suspect? If it's me, I will clear my name. Come on. I'm, I'm honest with you. You give, me the, you, you give me the privilege to be in charge of an investigation against me where I could potentially lose my head. Are you killing me? If I am a rebel, I will literally clear myself. And that's essentially what they have done uh, also. But that does not mean that the truth and nothing but the truth uh, isn't coming out or hasn't come out. 
Now, why do I why did I start this conversation this conversation this way? The international community was all over. It intended this to happen. From what we know today, the assassination of the two presidents and the extra 10 people who were with him was something that was pre-planned. It was not an accident. With the international community all over it. We're talking about some of the most powerful nations. I'll mention them, even if they cut us off today. Um, the United States had the details about what was happening. Definitely the French people knew what, was, what time it was. The British, they knew what time it was. The Australians knew. The intelligence community, they knew what was going on. And so were the Russians and the Chinese people. So we're talking about some of the most five powerful nations. Uh, they knew what was going on. However, they didn't do anything about it. Guys, we are 28 years later. And everything is still cla uh, classified. To make matters worse, every single plane that flies, it has something they call a black box. Can you believe 28 years later, that black box, it's nowhere to be found? Because these, the same nations that I mentioned, they do not want a single person to know what has, what has happened truthfully. But there are, there are those who have had a conscience, a change in the conscience, who have been actually sharing some of the details. Some of the details even on a record, you know, on, on recordings. And it is our hope that those of you who have the full details of what has happened, that you come forward before you die. Because this is, again, a quite amazing experience for Africans where you are, you, you are actually, uh, you are denied the privilege of having your own full history of, of the tragic situation that has taken place. Your own history is purposely buried in someone, in, you know, in someone's closet. The French owned the plane, and so guess what? Between the French and the United Nations, and, and I don't know who has the black box right now, to be honest with you, but they knew what was happening, but, but they also knew what was going to happen. So the perpetrator are also in charge of this, you know, the black box. Now, imagine, guys, you know someone has done you wrong. One year, two years, three years, 28 years, and you're still there doing nothing about it. Is that justice or what? I was just a kid back in those days, but now I'm, I'm, I'm quite an adult. I can think, I can read, I can actually scrutinize things. It is so sad to see that today, 28 years later, um, none of the countries actually care that two sitting president, two sitting presidents have died. Of course, I've seen and I'm super grateful for the Burundian people. A huge shout out to all of you Burundians. In Burundi, they actually had uh, an official, they, they literally have an official commemoration of uh, President Cyprien Nyamira and his three ministers. Do you know what, ha what happens in Rwanda? That's not even on a map. It's not even, it's not even recorded anywhere. Today on the 6th, it's just another day in Rwanda. Why? Because the suspect himself doesn't want to be reminded. And it's sad that the international community that knows exactly what has happened 28 years later, you're still covering. You're still covering an assassination and you're still covering suspects. Some of them are dying off and, and they will never have, they will never face justice. And this is where I get to ask all of you, especially if you claim to be democratic in any way, shape, and form, is that really the example of a democracy that you would like all of us to actually practice? There were families 
who lost their loved ones up to this very day, they have yet to obtain justice. And not only that, it's, got, it's gotten even more and more complicated in terms of just pushing it away and closing the cases. I can only imagine in the United States where a sitting president, you know, a sitting president is shut down on Air Force One and the FBI, the CIA, the members of uh, investigative uh, bureaus and, and, you know, members of armed services and none of them do anything. It, it's, it's like you cannot even, con you know, you cannot even think that in your head. Why is it the same nations who care so much about the integrity, the integrity of institutions and, and the last long, in, in, in the long, in, in, in the last law, in the, in the long lasting institution of the people and by the people? How is it that those same institutions, those same government cannot actually help Rwandan people in Burundian to actually have justice once and for all. We know why actually, we, we're not, we, it's like, so in Rwanda they have this proverb, uh, proverb that says, uh, never, never ask the teeth of a chicken when its mouth is open. Meaning it's like you can see inside of a chicken's mouth and you're asking how many teeth do you see, you know, how many teeth does this chicken have? And of course some of you will not get, the, will not get what I'm saying, but I'm, I'm gonna put it out there anyway. It's like my mouth is open, I got no teeth and you're asking me how many teeth I have. So we know what, what, what has happened, but because of the way the global community is structured right now, we cannot get justice yet. Eventually we will get justice, even though we have yet to get justice. So I want to salute every single one of the family members, every single one of the family members, every single one of them. I want to salute them first and foremost, and then I want to extend my salute to their families. Our condolences to each and every one of you who have lost uh, your loved one during the, uh, the assassination of uh, both President Habyarimana and Nadia Amira. And we have vowed ourselves to literally push and push and push until we get justice. We know there cannot be a, you know, justice when the suspect is in charge of, uh, of the investigation and all of that, but eventually we'll get justice. Sadly, some of those will not be able to stand trial because uh, they're getting old and they're dying. And guys, we are not even talking about Rwandese people first and foremost. We're talking about uh, foreigners. And, and we're not just talking about regular foreign Joe nobody. We're talking about, we're talking about dignitaries. This is serious, guys. So you have people toppling other people's governments. You have governments toppling other governments. And because they can, and they make sure that you say nothing about it, which is what happened in Rwanda. We had a coup d'etat in Rwanda in 1994. Burundi had a coup d'etat as well. And before that, it was, it was, an, it was another uh, president who was, who was butchered like a chicken or like a cow, all with the international community watching up in the open. So there is one thing that today I would love to share with each and every one of you, brothers and sisters, first and foremost. Our leadership of Africa, our leadership of your respective nations is going to be taken by us, sons and daughters of Africa. Anytime you give the responsibility to a foreigner who's not even a citizen, whose interest is not for you, the people, first and foremost. I look at it as treason, personally. And right now you have a lot of nations with complete charge of the entire continent of Africa in many various ways. I'll give you an example because I've got a few of them, if the time allows. But, it, but I really want to appear to you, brothers and sisters, uh, especially those of you who are still young. We have to change this narrative, guys. We cannot lose our loved one publicly and, and no investigation is done. No 
real investigation. I may, uh, let me just rephrase that because they have been investigation, but not the truthful, independent investigation. And that's what we are still seeking 28 years later. A loved one dies, not just any, a president and all the assistants. The crew member died. Nobody, nobody bothers. Because the same people who should have been on the lookout are involved. So it is our time, guys, that we, that we actually do right by all people who have perished. Uh, during the assassination of this plane of these of the two presidents and the rest of the trip uh, the ten people who were on board of the flight But also it is about time that we find justice for each and every one of them sadly though sadly the same assassination also uh, uh, Resulted in the mass atrocities that Africa has ever recorded in its history one of the mass atrocities one of the mass uh, brutal killings that there is to know in the 20th century and again up to this very day only cherry-picked people have been taken to the justice system to answer for the crimes of everybody else including the invisible ones meaning the the whole entire uh, the whole entire charade of justice has been actually uh, has, 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 has been pinned to the just few people you have mastermind criminal mastermind are walking free today untouchable from all kinds of first world nations second world nations even third world nations walking free today the innocent riding in jail and that's the justice we have right now as a people. So my heart goes out to all of you who have been uh, bystanders. My heart goes out to, uh, to especially the families, the families of the loved ones who have perished. Um, it is our desire that we actually uh, get justice, that we really, we really get justice. And we get justice uh, the soonest, the better. We cannot go another 30 years with no justice. All of them will be dead, naturally. There, there, needs, there needs to have a change in leadership in the whole entire Africa. And not just any type of leadership. We need to have a change in leadership that is actually uh, done by us, not the foreigners. Because you cannot seek justice if you're not in charge of your own country. If you cannot manage your nation, you cannot, you cannot ask anything from your nation. You are nothing but a slave in a nice suit because somebody else is running the show in your own nation and you call yourself sovereign nations. So today is very sad for, for us Rwandese people and those of you who don't know I'm from Rwanda actually. Um, and so many, many millions of people were killed Many, 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 many people were killed. Today we're talking about the genocide of Rwanda, of Rwandan people. It has been customized in many ways. And again, um, again, the, the suspect got the opportunity to, to actually um, explain to you all who has done what. I mean, it cannot, it cannot get any better. It's like a movie screen except that real people have died and 28 years later nothing is yet is yet reported nothing is yet spoken i never understand that it's so sad but it's the reality that we're living in today which is why we've decided to take charge of our own you know of our own homeland we want to take charge and we're not asking these first world nations permission it's our own inheritance. It is our inheritance to self-govern. It is our inheritance to seek justice for all our brothers and sisters, all of them. It is our responsibility to punish every single one of the perpetrators, including the foreigners, 
And when I say foreigners, I'm, I'm talking about non-African people. It's incredible how, for example, did you guys know that the United States, it's not a member of an international criminal uh, court. So the United States cannot send any one of its own citizen to the international criminal court. However, they rule the International Criminal Court, meaning uh, there are those who can actually face justice and those whose justice is out of reach of them. It's like, I'm the daddy, you guys are the kids. I am completely perfect. I am blameless in any shape or form. That's the United States when it comes to ICC or the International Criminal Court. But I also want to let you know that the United States, uh, the United Kingdoms, France, um, Russia, China, um, Germany, Australia, they are one of the, they are the biggest nation on planet Earth. That's, they are the biggest nation who have caused wars all over planet Earth, who are right now venturing in all kinds of wars on planet earth selling arms on planet earth they are the major ones understand me carefully if they cut us off we don't care the truth is truth but also fact check us fact check what we are saying now we, every time we mention that uh, they feel like we are attacking them but we're not attacking them we simply putting the truth right where the truth needs to be because it, it is it is so it it dumb finds me when I see how uh, our brothers and sisters they run towards the United States and they go and beg and they go and kneel down and say help us remove this guy from power and of course they oblige they go to France help us remove this guy guys I want you to know you belittle yourselves you belittle yourselves and you also belittle your, uh, your authorities. We have yet to find um, leadership by Africans. I, I have yet to see it. I'm talking about, I'm, I'm literally talking about the leadership by Africans. And the consequence, it's these assassinations. And it's about time we really stop that. It's about time we stop. We stop. Uh, giving our people away for slaughter because that's what we have that's what we experienced here and it's so sad that um, you know you usually have so many friends overseas I'm talking about the presidents of these nations African nations don't get me wrong I'm not talking about the outsiders they have friends and these friends in the names of other presidents or most powerful nations around when it comes to tragic times, when it comes to uh, moments like this when the assassination takes place, these other nations are nowhere to be found. Take for instance, Mumbutu Seseko, Kukungendo Wazabanga, I think. I know that name because they, uh, they used to sing it. That's how I knew him. But for those of you who don't know who, I'm just, uh, who I just mentioned, it was, he was the president of Zaire. Zaire is, what's, uh, is what we call today the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He was the bestie. He was the bestie, the best kid of the United States. Now, as a best kid of the United States, he was used and used and used. And after the sugar was out of the chocolate, he was discarded. When he died, none of, most of you cannot even show where his tomb is. A president dying like a dog. And yet he had one of the most powerful nation next to him as a best friend. What does that tell you guys? When president of Rwanda, Habiari Manda, was assassinated, his best friend, the French president, Mitterrand, what did he do? Guys, there's some serious problem of us African choosing best friends 
there are some serious issues with us African nation choosing best friends as you know from from the West and from the from Europe and from East. If your bestie cannot come to your rescue in your dark times, don't you have an answer as far as whether that person, you know, that, 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 that bestie is a bestie or not? It's quite sad, guys. It is quite sad. And today is one of those uh, saddest moments for me as a Rwandese person uh, because millions 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 of Rwandese people died millions and very few of them have had justice listen to me very few have had justice because justice has been fixated has been fixed innocent people rotting in jail while the true perpetrator are walking free in suits in power all because we couldn't have control of our own leadership. We couldn't manage our own nation. So outsiders had to come in and, and manage it. And they manage it according to their own interest. So again, I, um, as we remember today, I know most of you are, are afraid also. I'm not going to expect... That, that, that the majority of you will come, but the invitation is open anyway. Guys, I dare you to look through the assassination of uh, President Habyarimana Rimana Juvenal and President Nadiamira Cyprien. And I'm talking to the global community, not just the Rwandese people, the Burundian people, or just Africans. But, but, but now on a serious note, you brothers and sisters from Africa, uh, it, it's imperative that you take note what happens when you no longer are useful, when you, when you no longer are helpful to these other nations. Did you know that during the, uh, the time of assassination, the United States was, was, was literally on standby. Its military power was in Burundi, on standby. Standby for what? Waiting for the plane just in case it didn't, it didn't, it, it didn't go to Rwanda. You may wonder why is that important. Whether the plane landed and got shot in Rwanda, whether it was going to Burundi, the plane was already doomed to be shut down that same day. We're not afraid to say that. It's, most of it is declassified anyway, and some others... We have whistleblowers who also have been passing some of the entails. But I want you guys to imagine what we are witnessing 28 years later. I mean, the details have already started coming out. It's not like this is something new, something fresh. It's old. But the bottom line, old news that is legit and that is accurate in my book, will always replace bogus information, a lie that is actually uh, that 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 is actually distributed globally. So we have a task to do. We literally have a, an obligation to render justice, not just to these twelve people who were assassinated in the plane that was, uh, that was shut down, but the rest of the Rwandese people and the rest of the Burundians and the rest of the foreigners who were also affected by the war. Today in Rwanda, um, it is literally a dark time where they now are going to remember how the whole killing started and then the genocide. Right after the president's plane was shut down, Life was like flipped upside down to us. I believe every single Rwandan who was in Kigali, I was, they heard the plane getting shot. And afterwards, guns going out, you know, going off. And then the next day, all hell breaking loose. Countless lives lost. 
purposely implant, pre-planned countless lives. And up to this very day, we still have yet to render justice to these people. It's super sad, guys. Today is not one of those beautiful days to, to really talk about. But one of my excitement of today is that we finally, we finally got the strength, we finally got the boldness to actually speak up and speak the truth. Guys, the truth hurts. And this kind of truth can also get you killed. But we say here, I'd rather die knowing the truth and standing for the truth than staying alive cooking a lie every single day, denying justice to millions and millions and millions and millions of people because that's what's happening today. And shame on international community for knowing every single one of those details but deeming not important enough in the best interest of these nations to do anything about it, especially that the citizens for these very powerful nations have had a hand in it, including some of the government's institutions. We're not afraid to say this, guys. This is known information, even to you. So we literally have to flip the script, however we do it, ladies and gentlemen, we have to do it. But I will also appeal to the international community, those of you who still have a heart that actually beat blood. Would you help our brothers and sisters? Would you help our nation reclaim our own true identity? Would you help us get justice, true justice, not the kind of justice that is tainted with blood? We have yet to have justice. And history will write down what's been happening. We are doing it with or without your help, but it will be really, really appreciative if you actually do help because you know exactly what's happening. Especially governments that are in power today. We know that some of you have integrity in your dealings and we know that we still need us, Africans. There's a pretty good chances that by the time we are able to actually uh, to, to seek our own justice, not only we are going to literally shake, shake every place that there is to shake, but every single individual, every single institution that has had a hand in any one of our brothers and sisters' death to millions that have been perishing we literally are going to do all that we can to bring every single one of you to justice. We know it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of work, but it's not impossible. Excuse me. So today it's a sad day, but it's also a day of courage. And I want to ask the families of the people who have perished, not just in these assassinations, but also other Rwandese and Burundis and, and the foreigners who lost, they, you know, who have lost their loved ones. It is time for you guys to fight for true justice, not the justice from the movie, not the movie kind of justice. No, the true justice, where you can actually be given justice that you deserve, not the justice that is fixed. To, to make a mockery out of you and to make a mockery out of your own family and your loved ones because that's what we have right now. It's disgraceful. But it's also sad to all of us that we cannot have justice that we deserve. So I am asking you, Randy's people, to really take this year and fight for true justice. We know what has happened. We know who has done what. And now it's about time we gotta stand up 
and literally fight for the rights of every single one of those loved ones who have perished. For the rights of the victim as well. And fight for justice for every single one of the people who have either been wrongfully accused or those who actually need to be in jail. We got to fight and make sure that they, they get the justice that they all deserve. All of us, no exceptions. Now that is one of those tasks that actually causes us Africans to be like, mm, not me, not me. See, what had happened was I got friends, I, I've got this job, uh, my family is, is here, is there. Uh, I, it, it really irks me when a war is right on the door, you know, on your doorbell. Yet you're expecting someone else to carry on that war on your behalf. Which is how they take over the homeland of Africa. We're no longer soldiers. We're no longer, uh, we, we no longer uh, courageous individuals who actually fight on behalf of our brothers and sisters, on behalf of our families. We're like cowards. We don't fight. We don't stand up for ourselves. We rather have somebody stand up on ourselves. But guess what? Anytime someone is doing your work, they're going to have to cash in. There is a fee. There is a price to you giving up your freedom, to you giving up your own responsibility and put it on somebody else. There is always a price. And boy, did we pay the price. Only today I understand it because I'm a little bit older. But imagine, imagine the mistakes committed 28 years ago and still is being committed right now. We haven't learned, even today. So when are we going to learn? When are we going to do right by these families? When are you going to be truthful as the Rwandese people, as Burundians, as international community, where your own interest does not come before other people's interest? Though we know that's how most of you operate, but it is why also we're seeking today to take back what is rightfully ours without even asking for permission from any one of you. Which is why we run into conflict with you guys because you actually think you own Africa. You may think you own the people within, but Africa is not yours to own. It is not yours to own. No matter how much you... Make it known, no matter how much you cause havoc, eventually, eventually, the balance will come back where it needs to be. But at what expense, at what cost, guys? At what cost, brothers and sisters? How is it that 28 years, a sitting president cannot, cannot obtain justice? I, I, I'm trying to figure out that one. 28, 28 years, a sitting African president assassinated and nobody, nobody can say nothing about it. No justice whatsoever. I wonder what, what would happen if it was any one of the sitting presidents from either the West or the East or Europe. What would happen God forbid any one of these president goes to Africa and even they smell that someone is trying to, you know, to shoot the plane. All hell get loose, break loose. So why is it not the same to you guys? I wonder, I really wonder. And you brothers and, sis and sisters from Africa, I got a beef with you guys. Um, there's one thing of us having solidarity as Africans, but there's another thing when we ignore each other's um, lowest moment. We're doing it all the time. Look up, for example, what's been happening to the Congolese brothers and sisters. 
millions and millions of Congolese killed. And now one single African nation come out and call out for justice on behalf of those victims. Look at what, ha what has happened in Eritrea, in Ethiopia. I mean, massacre taking place in the open and none of us do anything about it. Look what's been happening in, in, um, in, 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 um, in the Congo, in the, the second Congo, right next to the DRC. Look what happened in Mali. Look what happens, uh, what's been happening in Chad, in South Sudan, in Sudan, in Somalia. I mean, Africa, it's a mess. None of us want to actually put ourselves in harm's way for many reasons, including none my business. That unity that we used to have, that unity that was a part of our culture, it's no longer there. I am longing for that unity here at our free dominion. And if you're tuning in via radio station, via television or via social media, that's because that something is also, it's also literally boiling in, you know, deep within you. We need that back, guys. We cannot take back Africa without us being truly unified. Not unified through papers, no. Truly unified as brothers and sisters. Where my issue is your issue. My happiness is your happiness. We cannot have that if we are not truly there for one another. And so it is for those reasons, guys, I am humbly asking you all to take some time and actually and purposely uh, learn and study what's happening to Rwanda right now. All of you know Rwanda as one of the most exemplary nations that you have ever seen. Uh, you have heard of President Kagame as one of the most Pan-Africanist individual that Africa has yet to have. But did you know that he was a rebel before he became a president? Did you know that he is one of those suspects? The party he was leading, he still is leading. It's a suspect in the murder of two sitting presidents and 10 other people who were in the plane. Did you know that? Of course not. Most of you would not know because you, you've never went that back. Did you know that he led a rebel group? Something today we call terrorism from October 1st, 1990 up until officially July 19th, 1994 when now the rebel became the government. Not only they seized the government with the help of the, all these powerful nations, they pursued Rwandese refugees, killed as many as they could kill, all in the open and the international community watching. You brothers and sisters all over Africa, you have no idea, none of that. Again, Fact check what I'm saying, guys. I dare you, all of you, those of you watching via television, those of you listening via radio station, and those of you on social media right now, fact check me. Because oftentimes we are so busy singing the song that's been predetermined for us to sing and to, and to listen to and to play nonstop to distract us, guys. We're running into destructions every single day. Purposely set up for that. Over here they sometimes call it, we, we've been drinking the Kool-Aid and we don't know who's the, who, who makes the Kool-Aid. We're just happy to drink the Kool-Aid. My brothers and sisters in Africa, your own nations are having issues, but you have no idea who's in charge. Because you do not bother diving deeper. You are afraid to die. You are afraid to lose your life, understandably. But there are a couple things that we have to choose, guys. Live free or die trying, you know, or die, in tr you know, die trying. But do not pretend to be free when you are just a dignified slave. A dignified slave is still is a slave. Just because you have a nice fancy suit 
just because you, you eat in a very beautiful villa, just because you all of a sudden have things around you, but you're still a slave, does not make you any better than the rest of your brothers and sisters who are slaves, who don't have any of the things that you have. We've been mentally, mentally, mentally captured and mentally turned into slaves. It was Bob Marley. Emancipate yourself from the mental slavery, guys. It's real. You may not have the physical shackles right now, but we are stuck, guys. We've got the real deal. Mentally, we are stuck. And anytime any one of you brothers and sisters break free, Heaven rejoices. And it is our greatest desire that all of us break free. Not because it's a favor from the masters. Not because it is some sort of like benevolent act of humanity. You shouldn't be a slave to begin with. And these nations would love nothing more than to keep you slaves for life. That's the truth. Like I said, we're not going to lie to you guys. Besides, fact checkers up in the open. So all these things taking place, it is taking place because we have allowed it to be. We continue to allow it to take place. When enough is enough. I sometimes want to ask my brothers and sisters from Congo, from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and I'll probably will end it there and then we'll, uh, we will finish the broadcast. Your nation is almost 100 million people. How is it that a little tiny country like Rwanda can come in and cause havoc in your whole entire nation? And you don't have just a few army to come in and just teach a lesson Rwanda. Now, it, it sounds terrible because I'm from Rwanda and I'm the one saying that. I am not saying that in a sarcastic way. I'm actually saying that in a more serious way. I am not literally being sarcastic here. You are one of the most wealthiest nation on the planet. What happened to the brave Congolese men and women? Those who would actually rather die than seeing your nation being raped openly by the neighboring countries, by the foreigners. I wonder, I, 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 I would love, I would love any one of you to come and we have, and, and to come and we sit down and talk about this because I, I don't understand. And I understand there is so much power, evil power around your whole nation. The same way that there is a whole evil power around the whole entire Africa as a continent. But we're also still there. We also are still kings and queens more than capable to fight back. More than capable to take back what is rightfully ours and to set the course right back where it needs to be. Why is it that we're not doing that? Why haven't we not been doing that? That's my question. Um, guys, again, our condolences. Our condolences to the families who lost their loved ones in, the, in that plane, uh, in that plane, uh, in that presidential plane that was shut down. Um, there isn't any word that I can actually say to, to make you all feel better, especially today. However, I would say to you all to never lose hope. To never lose hope. Real justice would be rendered, even if it takes a thousand years. The real history is being written, even if it delays my question, will you give us a hand? Will you lend us a hand to do it together? You are as responsible as I'm responsible today. Can you boldly stand 
and take back what is rightfully yours with no apologies to nobody. I've decided to do that even if it means even if it means that my life get cut short and so be it. There's some things that today I cannot live without guys on planet earth. I figure truth is better. I'd rather live in truth, love and trust than live in a straight out lie knowing that it's a lie and not being able to do anything about it. I'd rather die trying than just living in those conditions. I'm too important to live like a slave. You are too important to live like a slave. So again, uh, our condolences to, uh, to the family of Jackie, uh, Jackie Hero. Our condolences to uh, the family of Jean-Pierre uh, Menaberry. Our condolences to the family of Jean-Pierre, uh, Jean-Michel, Jean-Michel Jean, uh, Jean Perrin. Our condolences to the family of uh, Rwanda President Habiari Mana. Our condolences to the president of Burundi, uh, Nadia Mira. Our condolences um, to the family of uh, uh, General Dio Glacias Sabimana. Our condolences to the family of Tadej Bagaragaza. Our condolences to the family of Colonel Eli Sagatwa. Our condolences to Ambassador Jivna uh, Renzaho. Our condolences to Dr. Emmanuel Akingenie. Our condolences uh, to Minister uh, Bernard Chiesa family. Our condolences to the family of uh, Syriac Simbizi. And our condolences also to uh, those unknown individuals who also lost your lives when you were trying to rescue um, these families and, and, and when, when, you were, when you were around um, attempting to help them out. We, we, there's so much we can say on the air. Um, however, in due time, everything is going to be out. So guys, this is where we're going to end it up. I am super grateful for the opportunity. Apologies, we could not give you guys some of the images. Um, we were being threatened that if we put any images out there with our permissions, um, they will kick us off the air. Uh, there were some images that we wanted to share, but of course we did not get the opportunity. We will have an opportunity one day though to share all that we wish to share with you guys uh, in real time and God willing. And with that in mind, guys, uh, don't forget to shoot us an email, a message, uh, some feedbacks as to what you loved or dislike about the program. And again, come and join us for the very next, uh, for these next 100 days as we commemorate uh, the Rwandan genocide, uh, the, uh, the voice as we commemorate the invisible families who have yet to remember their loved ones, uh, those who will never get a chance to remember theirs because uh, they have been completely neutralized. Um, let's be real. Let's stand on their, you know, on their behalf and do that which is right. Uh, so our email, it's info at afridominion.com. Our website is uh, www.afridominion.com. Uh, please uh, come through and shoot us a message. I'm Freeman Singer and Kabo with Afri Dominion. Uh, guys, I'm wishing you a super fantastic day. Uh, this is one of the toughest time for Rwanda and Rwandan citizens and Burundians as well. If you know anybody from Rwanda, just go, get, go ahead and give them a hug, guys. And tell them condolences, like really mean it. Don't just say for the heck of it. And ask them if they have lost uh, any loved ones and, and, and just be with them for, you know, for a little bit of time. And with that in mind, guys, thank you so very much. Until next time. Or oh, until next broadcast, uh, I'm Freeman Singh Yuran Kabul. So long for now.